Hey everyone, I've got some exciting news to share with you. Now I've been commissioned to do, well I've just signed the contract to do a commission for uh, the club hotel in a little town called Esk. Now it's a beautiful old Aussie pub. In 1906 the pub was moved from one end of town to the other end of town and it's, it's well it'd be a good couple of kilometres at least and it was pulled by a bullock team and it just fascinates me. They had it on rollers, old logs and that, and they just pulled it along and they'd pull out a log. I think it took them about a month, from what I can, from what I can gather anyway. So I feel privileged to have been asked to put it on the wall for them. Now the only um, photo of it that I've got to, to work to is actually an old glass negative. And you, you just can't see it. Well fortunately, I was able to put it on my light box and we've got a sort of got a bit of an image and here's the image here this is a little bit highlighted a bit and so that's what I sort of got to work with and I'd love you to join me on my journey so what do you reckon come on let's get started okay once again we're doing a grid drawing and uh, and we start with the outline so i've done a little bit of the outline and it's just a matter of just getting everything in the right place lining it up with the with the grid now there's a little bit of you know this, this is quite time consuming but it's, it's mainly just about putting everything in place and there's a lot of rubbing out and moving things around and as I said earlier in the intro that you know I, all I had to work with was a a little piece of glass which was about I don't know six inches by about four inches and it was the old negative that's how they used to take the photos back in the old days and the main theme of 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 the drawing really is all about the bullet train or the bullet team so it's just trying to get them because I can't see on the even even though I've I've um, you know uh, managed to be able to make it at least get a photo by using my light box, but I can't see any detail whatsoever, no matter how much I've lightened it. And so I'm just sort of playing a little bit by ear. And of course. Um, although we can't see it on the negative but it had to be moved somehow and, and I actually found another old photo but from a different angle from the from the side angle and it would appear that there is there is rollers underneath it hold you know that they've used or well they would have had to anyway and, um, and I'd say they'll just be old logs big logs that they've cut and just imagine them you know walking along beside it really slow and Pulling the logs out and and then uh, move moving them. I don't know how they move them, but they move them back to the front and then roll it again. There would have been because of the the perspective of the of the of the picture, or the, even the photo. I mean, there's a. It looks like there's about six, twelve bullocks. Um, they were actually pulling it, but um, because of the perspective, I couldn't get them all in. I tried to do it as close to the reference photo, although the, the client um, did say that I could use artistic license. Well, I said I'm going to have to anyway because I just cannot see enough detail. little bits of grass just filling it in as we go and, and by the look of the, the the photo that I had to work with it would appear that there was at least one person but I think there was two people 
um, standing next to the building. I guess they were just keeping an eye on, on making sure the rollers are all in place. I don't know. I, I got no idea how they would have been able to control anything. Or now, obviously, there must have been other people involved, like. Stockman or something that you know that are controlling the actual the bullocks, making sure they don't run away or well not run away but behave themselves. I guess I suppose they've been I suppose they were specifically trained to do this. Now because I'm drawing this obviously in graphite but the the mural is going to be done in a, a sort of a sepia gray scale now I wasn't happy with the the bullocks so I rubbed it all out and I started again and, and I made them a bit different so the ones at the front I really wanted to be able to emphasize them and how they're, they're in there pulling So, as I say, it's all trial and error to start with. I'm just rubbing it out, putting bits in, and, and, and getting it to the stage where I'm happy. Happy with the drawing where it is. Now, because this is a negative, how the building is black is actually white. So, it took a while to realise that. little bits of I'd say up the top there there would have been because um, it looks like the, the, the roof has been exposed and I'd say there would have been a, a veranda going around the top well there is now I'm assuming there would have been then they would have had to take that off to move it to move the whole building You just got to take your time, like anything, like all you know, any piece of art you do. If you're trying to do it, you know, to um, to, to at least look something like the actual uh, image that you're referring to, because although I didn't have a, a a proper referral photo as such, but I'm still trying to get it as close as I can to how it would have actually looked like. But having said that, I wouldn't. I'm not putting in as much detail as I would if it was, if this if this was the actual commission. In which case, I would, you know, I would be doing. Um, I'd be doing a bit different, focusing more on on the detail. But here, all we want to do is just create an image. That we can use for our mural. And it's always a bit of a challenge. You gotta have challenges. I love being challenged. Love a challenge. A bit more to the point. I'm trying to get a little bit more detail with the windows because the windows are actually still in place. It looks like you can see the curtains in the background.
I'm not sure why they chose to move it from, its, from one end of town to the other, which is virtually what it was. It may have been that where it was was a bit low and it's right next to a river. Maybe they were worried about flooding or it had been flooded out. No doubt there would be history on it. Just trying to put in an effect of curtains there. Or the impression that there's curtains in the windows. And if you notice the windows, I've, I've sort of shaded them to the side and I've got a 45 degree angle. And that just creates the illusion of, or the impression of, of light reflecting off the glass. This is one of those drawings where as you're progressing along you, you'll see little things that you didn't notice to start with. It's only when you're actually putting them down and laying down the graphite that you, you, see, you notice got these, these little windows. Well they're not little windows, it's just because of the perspective. They're very, you know, they don't stand out as such except for the fact that it's um, being a negative photo, you can see that they do stand out. It's probably a lot better than what they would have had been in a, 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 normal, a normal photo. Only because of the contrast. And I'll tell you where that is. That's where the, the, um, the veranda on top would have been. They've removed all of that. Hence you can see. Well it's dark you can't see but that's the reason why it is darker there. Now I'm putting some some foliage in the in behind the, the bullocks there. Few highlights and for the bullocks, giving them some structure. It looks like it, looks like it was a hitching post or something. There's a couple of little eyelets on top of the wood there that must be able to tie things to, like their horses and stuff. It's mainly about getting the contrast, the lights and the darks. And I think when I start on the mural itself, it's going to be the same thing because they're not, they don't want so, a colour as such in it. Like I said, they want it to look like an old photo, so it's going to be in a sepia type. So I'm using um, a, a grey scale to paint it. I'm going to be using the grayscale. Now I'm just putting some grass down here in the front to fill that area in. And what I do when I'm doing grass is I do I don't do flicks. I keep the pencil on the paper, and you can go off in different directions. You know, slightly you know, to the left, slightly to the right different angles, I mean, it's just how I, I, it's a quick way of doing grass, then I go in with my Tombow and, and take a little bit out, and 
blend it and take a bit more out soften it up in the foreground it would be a little bit more um, distinctive I'm going to go back in with my pencil. I'm using the 2H pencil, a harder pencil, so it doesn't blur so much or soften so much. And my blending brush just to create little highlights or little darks and lights. And I got the old Kohi Noor 5.6. I think it's a 5.6 lead, just to cover that big area of the mountain. That mountain in the background there. It's not really a mountain, but it's a big hill. Well, it's, well, it's quite a steep um, landmark for one better term. And it, it, when I remember when I first went to Esk, it, it really stands out as you go down the main street. It's right, it sort of follows the main street along. I don't know if there's any attractions or anything on there. Attractions because um, you think it'd be a great place for abseiling. It's quite steep. In places there's a few trees growing on it and, and it's quite rocky now I noticed in the in the photo that I've got to work with there's a some sort of a structure in there here so I've just decided what well, I'll put in a little shed or could be an old hut put in some clouds. Once again I'm using my Kohinoor clutch pencil, paper towel just to soften it all up and then I'm blending it and it just, just pushing the graphite around just to create the different textures and once again the contrast the lights and mid-tones and darks and then the old faithful blue tack that goes in and go in with that and Take out some highlights. Just taking a little edge off the top just to give it a little bit so it stands out a bit more from the sky. and highlighting the right hand or well, darkening the right hand side and that, because we're sort of looking from the left to the right so we'd see more um, of, of the, um, well, the shadow there or, or the depth of the timber and from looking at another photo the other photo that I, I happened to come across, you can see that the, that was there was more to do on this side that I'm doing now. Taking it off to tomorrow, I'm going to go and show it to the client. Yeah, hopefully we can get started on it. Well, that's the first part of the process done. Now, it's not a complete or a finished um, drawing by any means. It's just uh, something that I can use uh, as a referral to put up on the wall. So that's why I've got the grid lines and that in there and I'll be gridding all that up and then starting on the mural um, and that's where uh, the detail is, is 
well as such you know like um, will become when I actually do the painting all right now I'd just like to say a big thank you to all my new subscribers in fact all my subscribers I really appreciate each and every one of you and if you haven't subscribed yet please feel free to, to do so if you want to learn a little bit more about art or a bit more about drawing or you just want to just have a look at someone drawing you know <laughs> yeah I'd love you to join me so now in part two we're going to be going I'm going to be filming as much as I can of the process of actually doing the mural on the wall so it's going to be really interesting and I'd love you to follow along you know just something a little bit different anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one oh and I'd like to give a special shout out to, uh, to a bloke I met the other day we are in an exclusive club um, Colin, you know what I'm talking about catch up with you next week cheers mate